Hack the Box released a new entry-level cybersecurity cert called Certified Junior Cybersecurity Associate. It's designed for people with zero technical background who want to break into cybersecurity. It promises to teach you both the defensive and the offensive side of cybersecurity. Now, Hack the Box is known for their high quality, practical hands on cybersecurity training. I've recommended them in previous videos, and people have landed their first cybersecurity job by following advice on my videos and doing Hack the Box training that I recommended. So, I had to take a deeper look at this training, but as soon as I started reviewing it, I quickly hit a brick wall. It really covers both the offensive and the defensive side of cybersecurity. So, who is it really for? Is it for someone who want to be a SOC analyst or an ethical hacker? But more importantly, as I was going through the modules, some of the modules are rated as easy, whereas others are rated as medium. Now, with my industry experience, my skill might be different than you. What I find easy, you might find difficult and vice versa. Therefore, I decided to go through the cert myself to figure out who to recommend it for. And I decided to get a complete beginner to take the training and the exam with me. That way you get both perspectives mine and someone in your shoes. I reached out to Hack the Box with this idea and they generously agreed to sponsor this video and give me one free giveaway for someone to do this training and give their perspective with me. Now in this video, I'll give you a detailed look at the training, help you decide whether you should do it or not, how it compares to other practical hands-on cybersecurity training, and at the end, I will show you how you can enter and win the free giveaway, starting with the content of the training. To start learning cybersecurity, the traditional advice for beginners was that they need to first learn the fundamentals of IT and networking and operating systems before they can even start learning cybersecurity. This was usually followed by recommending branded, multiple choice based certifications that teach you absolutely nothing. This cert actually covers everything you need in terms of foundation when it comes to IT and networking, and you get to practice them in a hands on lab, which gives you the opportunity of actually actually gaining knowledge instead of memorizing things and forgetting them after the exam. Applying what you learned in the lab is the only way to learn cybersecurity. You cannot learn swimming from a book. You actually have to jump in the water and do the thing. And the best part is you can actually start learning this cert for free. So many modules within this cert you can do for free, which gives you a chance to learn and decide if this is something that you want to continue with. Now, looking at the material, it starts you off with an introduction to information security. This is where you get to learn what information security actually is, the day-to-day -day tasks that we do, structures of teams, and some basic fundamental definitions. Then after that, you go to introduction to networking. This is a fairly comprehensive module that will cover everything you need in terms of networking. So you get an overview of networking, network types, topologies, proxies, the OSI model, and topics that cover pretty much everything that you need in terms of networking. This will actually save you time and money because you don't have to go and do additional networking certifications for cybersecurity. This is actually sufficient for the purposes of cybersecurity. After that, you get to Linux fundamentals. Now, if you've been watching my videos for a while, I have actually recommended some of those modules in my previous roadmaps. So some of you will already be familiar with them. Now, Linux is an operating system that's widely used in cybersecurity. This is something you will 100% come across. And after that, you get introduced into bash scripting. Now, this will be your first taste of basic scripting, which will essentially teach you the basics of writing some basic codes in bash, which is used in Linux, to automate certain activities in cybersecurity. Now, don't freak out if you haven't done coding before. This module is labeled easy, and it is designed for beginners who have no prior background in coding, which is a really great introduction for you. Next, you jump in to the other prominent operating system, which is Windows. You get Windows fundamentals, and then you get an introduction to Windows command line. Now, as someone who used computers, you will be familiar with how to use Windows, but the introduction to command line will open your eyes in a lot of things that we do on the command line in the world of cybersecurity. Now, the next two modules deal with web application, which are web requests and introduction to web applications. Now, this is where you will learn about how web application works and the different underlying protocols for web applications. 
application. All of these are essential skills for anyone who want to be an ethical hacker or a SOC analyst. Now, like I said, there are practical hands-on within this training, and here is what one of them look like. As you can see, fairly intuitive, easy to use, and gives you a chance to put everything that you've learned into practice. Then the next two modules will introduce you to penetration testing, which is essentially ethical hacking. Now, it's pretty unusual for entry-level cybersecurity training to get you to quickly learn penetration testing and even applying it into a lab, which in my opinion, makes this training quite unique. I interview cybersecurity candidates literally every single week. And trust me when I tell you this, I don't see many entry-level candidates who have this level of skills, who have actually applied the things that they've learned. So getting introduced to these things early on in your journey is priceless. Now, if I give you an inside look into the introduction to penetration testing, what I really like about this training is the no-nonsense approach. There isn't much fluff in this, and they actually focus on things that we do in the industry. For example, looking at penetration testing versus vulnerability assessment. Here you get to learn about the difference between the two activities and they actually show you what the output of OpenVAS, which is an open source vulnerability scanner, looks like. There is a really nice screen capture here and you get a good explanation on how these things are used in the real world. Now the next module that you will explore will be network enumeration with Nmap. This is following through with the offensive security side of this training where you will get to use a tool called Nmap. It's quite versatile we use it for enumeration, port scanning, and other activities. Here, you will get to use it and test it out in a virtual environment. The next module, things starts to get a bit harder because the next module will be the first module with the difficulty level of medium. The module is titled Footprinting, which is possibly one of the very first tasks that you will do when you conduct a professional penetration test. This is where you start doing your reconnaissance and you start serious information gathering. Now, because I've gone through Hack the Box modules before, and I've done cybersecurity training from pretty much every training organization out there. I know when Hack the Box labels something medium, you better trust it's medium. In fact, if you've only done theoretical stuff before and this is your first hands-on practical training, medium might actually be a little bit challenging for you. So pace yourself, don't freak out, and it's quite normal to go over the modules more than once and do the labs at least two times. Remember, you are a beginner and this is a new topic for you. It's really normal to feel challenged, but rest assured, this is how we learn. Now, the next few modules are actually pure penetration testing modules. So we've got hacking WordPress using Metasploit, which are labeled easy. This will help you continue the momentum of the training and boost your confidence. These are really cool topics. Now, I still remember how I felt the first time I hacked something. I felt so invincible, which is pretty stupid to think about, but it's a lot of fun. Now, the next few modules, you will actually learn some serious SOC analyst skills, with the first module being Introduction to Network Traffic Analysis. Like I said, I've actually recommended these modules individually from Hack the Box Academy in some of my previous videos. So I'm pretty certain a lot of you would have done this already and this one is titled medium and I remember some students telling me that this was hard because they came from doing theoretical multiple choice stuff. So trust me, you will come a better cybersecurity professional when you do these modules. So we start with introduction to network traffic analysis. This is a fairly comprehensive module where you will learn some serious tools that we use in analyzing network traffic. You will need these tools whether you work as a SOC analyst, penetration tester, network security professional or even firewall engineer. Tools like TCP, dump and Wireshark, they will stay with you throughout your cybersecurity career. Now, after that, you go to the incident handling process. This is where you will learn what process to follow in a professional setting to respond to cyber attacks. Now, as a hiring manager, the incident handling process is something I always ask about in interviews for pretty much any cybersecurity job. Even GRC professionals who don't necessarily do technical work, they know the incident handling process. So these are all pretty fundamental stuff. The next module looks at at Windows Events Log and how you can find evil. This is a pretty core cool module rated as medium and I have recommended this module in so many of my videos. It's really important because it will teach you how to look at Windows logs, understand what normal traffic looks like and then be able to compare it to what malicious traffic look like. This is essentially how we know that something wrong has happened. For example, when you have a malware in your network, Windows event logs will look different than when you don't have a malware. So this type of analysis is what we 
we do as stock analysts. And then you learn about SIEM, which is essentially a centralized log management system where we get the logs ingested from every source in the network. And then we create automated alerts to tell us when something wrong has happened. As a SOC analyst, your job would be to detect, analyze, and respond to cyber attacks. So understanding how a SIEM work and being able to configure the SIEM is another essential task for SOC analysts. And finally, you get an introduction to threat hunting. This is a pretty intermediate task where you learn how to look at network traffic and be able to hunt threats that your detection tools weren't able to catch. Now, this module is rated medium and it will be a nice little challenge for you at the end. Now, these modules are designed for a beginner, so don't freak out. But the question is, what if someone just want to be a SOC analyst? Should they still do this cert even though it covers things like penetration testing? And also, what if someone just want to do GRC or just general cybersecurity work? Do they really need to do this cert? Who should do it? Now, I see this problem every day. When someone want to break into cybersecurity, they usually either want to be an ethical hacker or a SOC analyst. Now, there is nothing wrong with this approach. However, this is not the approach that I recommend. Now, in my six months roadmap video, which has helped so many individuals land their first cybersecurity job, I recommend the generalist approach. This way, I get you to learn a bit of everything at the beginning to build a strong foundation, which will actually help you to qualify to a larger number of jobs. So you're not just restricted to SOC or you're not just an ethical hacker. Now, this approach has the added benefit of opening so many doors for you because small to medium sized businesses, they usually can't afford the dedicated team of specialists. So you will be hired as a cybersecurity specialist or a cybersecurity analyst where you will be expected to do a little bit of SOC analyst tasks, some vulnerability management, some report writing. Therefore, what I personally think is that this set is actually in line with my approach. You start out as a generalist, then later on you can specialize. Now, if you followed any of my roadmaps, I actually recommend doing this set at the end of the roadmap because it's a bit broad, but it will also challenge you. However, I don't want you to think that doing this set alone is all there is that you need to do to land your first cybersecurity job. Yes, some of you may be able to do that, but I want you to think of this as your starting point. This is just a beginner entry level cert that you should use to build foundation and continue learning as you go. Now, as for the pricing of this cert, I'm gonna leave links in the description box below so you can go directly there and check the price out. But as of the time of the publishing of this video, you can get this cert with the silver annual subscription and there is a 25% discount up until the end of August 2025. This, in my opinion, is the best way to do this training and certification because it will give you access to this job role path and you'll get one exam voucher for CJCA. You also get another exam voucher of your choice between CBBH, CPTS or CDSA. You will also get access to modules in tier 2, which actually covers job roles for Hack the Box CBSA and CPTS. Now, if you get a Hack the Box subscription, which I recommend that you do, then my recommendation for you to do Hack the Box CBSA, which is the Hack the Box SOC Analyst Cert. It's a solid cert, but it's intermediate and it's challenging. So it's actually a great idea to start with this associate cert before you do CBSA. And for those of you who want to be ethical hackers, then I recommend Hack the Box CPTS. It's a challenge challenging penetration testing cert and doing this cyber associate cert first will actually help you a lot. Now you may be wondering, this is a new cert. What if hiring managers don't recognize it? What if HR doesn't know about it? Well, I'm gonna solve this problem for you. But first, I want you to understand that this line of thinking comes from the assumption that hiring is based on a name of a cert. So beginners usually look at a job description, they ignore everything in the job description, and they hyper fixate on the name of the cert. But if you actually look at a proper job description, you will see that the job is asking for a number of skills. Now, those skills, a lot of them are actually covered in this cert. Now, to solve this issue for you, I will show you how to add a line item in your resume that will package these skills that you've learned in this cert in a way that's recognizable by hiring managers and HR. Let me show you how. Now, when you pass the exam, this is how I will add it to the resume. But first, if you want this template, go download it for free from unixguy.com free and under training and certification, 
qualifications. I'll just say, hack the box certified junior cybersecurity associate. We'll put the name of the certification that we passed. And then in a small paragraph, I'll let the hiring manager know what's inside this cert. We say completed hands-on certification, combining offensive and defensive cybersecurity. Topics cover include reconnaissance, vulnerability scanning, exploitation, lateral movement, seam assisted lock and network traffic analysis, intrusion detection, and report writing. This way, any hiring manager would recognize the skills that you've learned in this cert. Now, as I was going through this cert and the exam, which by the way is a lot of fun, the main question that was at the back of my head was that how does this certification compare to other entry level cybersecurity certifications, especially ones with hands on practical labs? Now, before I answer that, we need to agree on one thing. If you have the mindset that you want to do just one training course or one cert and then be guaranteed this six figure amazing cybersecurity career, then I want to tell you that you're mistaken. I want you to think of cybersecurity as a long term career. Therefore, as you're planning, your learning journey, you should follow a structured step-by-step -step roadmap that progressively challenges you. Ditch the mentality of doing the minimum amount of work because it leads to disappointment. Now, as far as this cert is concerned, I think the main thing that really stands out in this cert is that it gives you penetration testing skills. Other training providers have good entry-level cybersecurity certs that focus on SOC analyst, whereas this one gives you SOC analyst and ethical hacking skills which is pretty unique. It's really good for someone who plans to be an ethical hacker because this can be your starting point and at the same time, it doesn't just narrow you to ethical hacking. So if you decide to change your mind later, then you can pursue more SOC analyst training. Now, the second thing that stands out in this cert, which is my personal opinion, is that this cert, similar to other Hack the Box training, is slightly challenging. It's my personal experience that Hack the Box training and certifications are actually a little bit harder than other training providers, which is a really good thing and it's part of the reason why I've been recommending them throughout the years. Doing this type of training, especially early in your career, will make you a much better cybersecurity professional. Now I understand if your experience is different or if you find it easy, this is of course subjective. Now as for the giveaway, I actually want one of you to win the giveaway, take the exam and let us all know what you think of this training. So to win the giveaway, first make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel. And the second thing is I will make a link in post with the details of how to win this giveaway. I'm gonna put a link to this LinkedIn post in the comments and in the description box of this video. The reason why I chose LinkedIn is because I want to verify that you are a real person and that you're willing to share your experience with us. So go to the LinkedIn post and follow the instructions to win this giveaway and I'm gonna leave a link to this training so please check it out and let me know what you think.